Hi everybody, thank you for having me with you. My name is Imelda and I have an interesting news for you. What is it? Well, soon I will be traveling to the United States of America. But then I thought something that may be interesting for you as well. You know what? I often have trouble with pronouncing certain words when I am in the US because they pronounce it differently. So they have trouble understanding me and I have trouble understanding them. So I thought it would be a great idea where I can show you all the words and how they're pronounced differently in both the UK as well as the US. <laughs> started with the first word of the day is schedule. Now the British pronunciation is sh shed you okay so it's like shedding your clothes so shed you. However Americans pronounce this word as sked you. So it is schedule versus schedule. The next word I have for you is often. Now British pronounce this word as off, un, often. However, Americans, they stress on the T here and they pronounce this word as off, tin. Not ten, but ten. So you can say, yes, it's not often, it's often. Okay, so it's schedule, often. Let's move on to the third word, herb. What is a herb? You see the green vegetables or leaves that will help you or will become a medication or a drug? That's what the herb is, like it's plants. Okay, however, it's pronounced differently in these two countries. So herb is pronounced the way it is pronounced or spelt in British, which is H U R B. So it is herb. However, while you're in America, they often drop the letter H and just pronounce the E R B. So it becomes herb. Herb versus herb. Okay, is that clear? Sure. Now let's move on to the complicated ones. Is it privacy or is it privacy? Well, the British pronounce this word as privacy. However, the Americans stress on the I and they say pri. Visi. So it's privacy and privacy. Similarly, vitamins versus vitamins. Vit almonds. They say bite mince. Okay, so the pronunciation or the stress is on I here. The difference in the pronunciation is an I here. The next most common but most confused word is water. Now, British pronounce this word as water. Water. Okay, so I'm going to write as water. Water. Please note my mouth or my lip movement water. Notice the way my lip is becoming round. Water. One thing that you may want to note is British usually do not pronounce the letter R in their words. Maybe it's park or water or car. They don't pronounce the R as much as the Americans do. So how do we change or how, do, how does this word water changes into water? Let's look. Wa der. So it's water. What happens with American pronunciation is as soon as the alphabet T falls between 
two vowels, the T becomes D. So it becomes water versus water. 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 So you see that you so you saw the difference? Great. Now let's move on to the next word. Identify. Now British pronounce the way it is read or it is spelled. I den T Fi. That is I den T Fi. However, Americans they usually do not pronounce the letter T. How would you pronounce the word then? It becomes I Denny Fi. So it's identify versus identify. We need your identification. So that's how an American would ask your uh, any identity proof. All right. So it's identify versus identify. Moving on to the next word is, can you help me pronounce it? Now some say it's garage, some say as garage. So garage is British. Gar, idge, okay? Garage, it's the same as marriage or cartilage. The A-J-E becomes idge for British. However, the word Garage is changed as garage. So it's no more garage sale, it's more as a garage sale in the US. Okay, and finally, the last but my favorite word of the day is mobile or mobile. American is Mo Bill. Some of the Americans don't pronounce the ill sound. Sometimes they pronounce it as sorry, oh. So you can either say mobile or mobile. However, our dear British friends pronounce it as Mo. So the stress is in the eye here. Mo, bile, and mobile. So friends, you saw how different pronunciation uh, or how different people pronounce the same words in the US or the UK. I hope you found this lesson extremely interesting as well as useful. I will be back with another one. Until then, see you, goodbye. Hello. Yeah, hi. Um, I would like to book tickets for uh, yeah, for, for five friends of mine and myself. And we are going from Amsterdam to Prague. Uh-huh, that's right. Do you want to take down our names? Sure. My name is Imelda. Oh, no, it doesn't start with A. It starts with E. Yes. Uh-huh. And the next one I have is Kiara. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Her name starts with C-H. It does not start with K. Hmm. You know what, ma'am? Um, I may have to spell out my name uh, using the international radio telephonic alphabets, uh, but I'm going to come back to you. All right, I'll call you in a while. Yeah, don't worry. No, it's OK. It's fine. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. You see, friends, some of us have very beautiful name. However, some of our native English speaking friends do not really know how to spell our names as the names we spell or the names we have is different than theirs and we use certain alphabets in a different way. So I'm going to walk you through the international radio telephonic alphabets. It's also used in, major, in many countries in military in Navy, including the NASA. Now let's see how most people or most multinational companies who have call centers across the world, most airlines and most hotels across the world use these alphabets to spell out name. All right, so let's... Hmm, how to reduce redundancy in English? Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a king 
who used to be very harsh on his subjects. People could no longer stand his suppressive attitude. And there then came a wise man who, through the knowledge from his previous experience, overcame the king in three years' time. Nice story, isn't it? But did you notice something? That a lot of words in the story are not really necessary as they don't really add any meaning to the story. For example, once upon a time there was a king. Well, what's the harm in saying once there was a king? Practically, that's what you mean. So, upon a time became redundant.